Let's take a little tour here. Ooh, my peppermint shrimp. I haven't seen this dude in a while. He looks big. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if this control, controller prefers to have alternating DC current. Here's the battery installed nice and tidy under the cabinet, under the fish tank. And we are gonna put this battery to the test. As we can see, <laughs> the battery here is sitting at 26.45 volts. Now I charged this, it's been a month and a half, a little bit more than a month and a half, almost two months. I charged it to 29 volts and it's now come down to 26.45 and that's rested. Um, we've got our two pumps that keep this tank alive are connected. That's my underwater sponge canister filter as well as the Jabao gyre type uh, wave maker that's up in the corner. Those are really the only two things that are moving water in this tank. I have no other filter, no external filter, no other internal filter, just those two. Well, I do have a refugium and that's on an AC pump. I'm gonna have to convert that. I'm gonna have to go and purchase a DC pump and get that connected up. I think I talked about that in a previous video. Anyway, for now, for this test, to keep this tank alive, if there is a power outage, those two pumps will continue to work. I've got them connected here to the switch. We see the switch is active, and that's because um, it's connected to the power supply coming off of the AC part of the house. You can tell that that switch is actively on because of the red LED. We are gonna simulate a power outage, and I'm gonna put it to the test, and we're gonna see how long the system is gonna last. How long are those two pumps gonna last? Because this is kind of more of a realistic um, test because your battery's gonna be charged and sitting there for at least two months and maybe even a year before it actually um, gets used. It can have a different runtime than if you just charge the battery and then use it right away. Because of the chemistry in, these, in the different cells that are in batteries. If it was a lead acid battery and you let it sit for a year, you'll get maybe half of the capacity that battery has, the, the potential that that battery has. You only get half of it out of there. In a lead acid battery, the, the energy is depleted out of there. It, it happens very slowly, but it does happen. So you can charge a lead acid battery completely, and then a year later, it's only got half the capacity. So that's why you kind of always have to top off lead acid batteries. Lithium iron phosphate batteries hold on to their um, energy a little bit longer, quite a bit longer. I would say probably after a year, maybe you still get 90% out of it. Let's take a little tour here. We can see the battery here is plugged where it comes out of, the, of there, plugs in here, and it's um, plugged right into the switch there. Now, it goes on, the wires after they come out of here, one goes completely out. The wire comes right out of this hole that I drilled and goes directly into the controller for the J-Bow. Um, this is the power supply. That comes right in. This is the one that's plugged into the AC, converts it to DC. And we've got that going straight to the switch. I'm running this currently at only one bar and that's about where I usually run it one bar and that seems to be plenty now the other wire because I have two wires coming out of this switch and the other one runs right up along the back side here let's see if I can get it I've got it coming right up the side here you can see it goes up, 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 up. And <laughs> if I can do it, I'm not sure if I can follow. It goes right alongside that two by four, all the way across. And over here we can see it comes on down past the liquor. 
<laughs> and to this controller. So now I only have one power supply um, connected to both of these pumps. I'm using the one single JBOW power supply to run both pumps. So I've eliminated a power supply. I'm eliminating power supplies left and right here. And I just, it's not really reduced my amp draw, but it, it's running one less power supply, so there's a little bit less juice that's being drawn off the house. That's the pump running at half speed. Let's take a little look-see at where that pump is. So we've got our J-Bow here that's churning the water. It's making it go vroom. And then back here, Ooh, my peppermint shrimp. I haven't seen this dude in a while. He looks big. Wow. That's my Aptasia eating peppermint shrimp. It's a rather large canister filter. I would say it's about a foot and a half tall. And that's a three inch pipe. And then I have two large sponges. This is 29 inches long, the, tank, the fish tank is. And that sits under the sand bed, that's the pump. It sits under the sand bed and all it's doing is sucking water. All it's doing is sucking water through those sponges and running it through my ceramic media and dishing it out here. These sponges, I clean them about once a year, that's it. Um, got my heaters back here. I've got my refugium pump, which is an AC pump, and I need to switch that over to a DC pump so I can get it on backup as well. I'd hate for the refugium to be down during a power outage. Um, just because I don't have to, right? Just get myself a DC pump and put it on there already, spicy. <laughs> All right, let's pull the plug on this bad boy. I'm gonna turn the camera up to the J-Bow and you can see how long, once I pull that, the battery should kick in and we're gonna see that pump turn off and then turn back on. So let's go, one, two, three. And that's how quick it is. It reacted very fast. You can see I've pulled the plug. Let's get that timer going. And we're gonna see how long it lasts. Now we can also see down here the switch is now not engaged, it is disengaged because that LED is not on anymore. So the read switch has just connected to the battery. And now we've got everything running. We've got both of our pumps running. I just noticed something here. With my test, somehow when I pulled the power and the switch um, moves to the battery This other pump is not working Something about this controller it must be asking for more juice than um, Something in my connection is able to provide but if I unplug the power here now I'm gonna unplug I'm back on battery mode. I've unplugged the AC. And so now I'm gonna plug this back in and see if it powers up. Maybe it just doesn't like being switched. Nope, still giving me E. So it doesn't like being connected directly to the battery. Why? Why, why, why? Maybe something about the switch is limiting. Maybe something about this wire. Maybe the wire is too thin not heavy enough gauge, but you'd think after a little bit it would gauge. So strange. I wonder if I can run both pumps off of the J-Bow controller and just take this and run it directly to the J-Bow controller. Or I can put a J-Bow controller here because I have another one and plug this directly into the JBow controller and plug the JBow controller into the pump that's in the tank. I wonder if that's gonna fit. Let's, uh, not sure which one is easier to do. I'm not even sure if I have some of these fittings. Yeah, I don't have the right fittings on this. 
for this to go directly into the JBAO controller that's operating the WaveMaker because I would need to get a Y connection off of that to go from that JBAO controller to the WaveMaker and to this pump. So I'd have to have a Y connector to get over here. So let's just try and put my other JBAO controller in place of this controller. There's something about this controller that doesn't like being run off of the battery. I just had to double check the power supply here. And this is the one that comes with the pump that is on the um, internal canister filter that I have. Right there, it says 24 volts and two amps. It says 24 volts, two amps, 2.75 amps. I don't know. I think maybe that controller there just does not like being switched on and off like that. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if this control controller prefers to have alternating DC current. Because when, I, when it switches over to the battery, the battery is DC current straight not alternating but the, um, the power supplies here is taking AC at 60 Hertz and converting it to DC but a lot of times um, that DC is alternating meaning it uh, not really alternating its pulse it turns into like a pulse DC so it's on off on off on off on off on off it could be that this controller does not like the straight DC because 24 volts is 24 volts until you alternate it or pulse it. It perhaps does not like the pulse DC. It's the only thing I can think of. Let me know. It's kind of a mystery to me uh, what you guys think that could possibly be. I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger and then it hit me. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>